Hi folks, I'm doing quick video overviews of each chapter in my book. There's a lot of them, so I have a lot of videos. We are here, theme four, anti-institutional disobedience. If you're familiar with my previous work in a zine I had called Disobedient Electronics a few years ago, this really expands on that. So if you're interested in that zine, you probably like this. I talk about uh, uh, Robot K456 by Namjoon Paik, Hairbrain 2000 by Laura Kakauka, Feral Robotic Dogs by Natalie Jermanjenko. So in this, I'm going to just give a quick overview of theme four, Anti-Institutional Disobedience, and Robot K456 by Namjoon Paik, Korean-American artist working in the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s. Here's the book. Just got it. Just sitting down, giving overviews of each of these chapters. So what do we mean by anti-institutional disobedience? I'm glad you asked. Well, um, I talk about the Victorian Albert Museum show in 2014 talking about uh, disobedience as a component of art and design protest, graffiti, pamphlet bombs, uh, homemade shields against riot, riot police, covert stencils. Um, I also discuss um, Anthony Dunn, Fiona Raby, Matt Ratto, Carl DeSalvo, Christoph Ochico, um, Geert Loving, David Garcia, um, and I have a couple of pages here on Christoph Wojcicki's concept of interrogative design. Um, interrogative design, in my mind, was way ahead of, uh, at least for me, critical design, or I came across it in the early 90s and um, it's an idea that uh, design work should interrogate and question the world uh, and kind of the whole systems of where how we live and what we do who we are and all this sort of stuff Christoph, working as a prof at MIT had this really beautiful in 1994 wrote uh, this piece called interrogative design um, pertaining to or of the nature of questioning having the form or force of a question of a word or form employed in asking questions um, and getting away from the painkillers of optimistic design fantasies I love that <laughs> I love that phrase of Christoph's he I, in my mind he's just he's just super brilliant and um more people should totally tune into Christoph Wojcicki. He's absolutely brilliant uh, artist and designer and engineer. And I and I actually um, dedicate part of this to discussing his homeless vehicle project, um, which is a project that was made to be controversial. It's kind of like a shopping cart on steroids, designed as a makeshift home and recycling center and. Uh, shelter for people uh, designed intentionally as kind of a good design but also kind of a bad design um, intentionally made to ask questions is this what we really want for people that are unhoused Do, is this what we want is is a shopping cart he he totally knew this is trained as an engineer working as a prophet at MIT um, and it's just kind of a really poetic way to introduce these chapters. So um, the main, I'll we'll continue on here. Chapter 4.1 talks about Namjoon Paik, Robot K456, Wabi Sabi, Electronic Art Provera, and Beautiful Mistakes. Um, I basically uh, say that this, what I term, a fuck you agenda 
<laughs> kind of an anti-establishment agenda uh, that really kind of has some similarities to the punk movement that this is notable and this is an approach that our anti-institution or questioning institutions is one thing that that individuals can can do really well and especially artists with not a ton of technological um background sometimes well, sometimes they do have a ton of technical background but it's not necessarily required. So um, I'm interested in exploring this kind of parody, protest, sacrilegious stuff in this chapter. And the way that I do that, and this is the, see that image there? That's the cover. See, that's Nam June Paik's robot K four five six performing on a on a street in New York City in 1964. It was this kind of hacked together, honestly, kind of a sad looking. Well, for, if you're an engineer, you'd definitely say that this is a pretty weird hack job of a project, and he knew this. He knew this. He was actually insistent that it looked junky. He he honestly could have made it look like a gleaming C-3PO if he wanted to. He definitely had the technical skill and the resources to do it. But he chose to make this honestly kind of a junky thing as artwork. And he did this in some ways to piss people off and to piss institutions off there's a, a, a major theme through contemporary art all through the 20th century uh, that comes out of kind of like the shock of movements like flexus and dada that that really and and carries through into contemporary art where it's a game just to kind of give your middle finger to the art establishment and playing with this as a resource for building art okay so robot k456 was this kind of futuristic robot of sorts a tongue-in-cheek and a sarcastic that kind of shit beans out of it had these kind of like foam breasts that twirled around had this pie plate head it also uh, played recorded audio, um, had these like hands that were made out of like these floppy gloves and stuff. Um, it's a it's a true hack job. Um, and I think that that's completely great, actually. I think it's something that artists should do more of. And I think that partially because it's evaluated in a different way. This is not designed to be a perfect machine. It's designed to be a more human-like machine. And if you believe that humans are perfect, you would design maybe a C-3PO. If you, design, if you think that human life and experience is kind of screwed up and messy and, and full of contradictions and kind of inefficient and stuff like that, you would look more like this. Or at least that's what I think. This is much more a portrait of humanity with all the lumps and warts. And it, it is human, or it has personality, I should say, because it, it has fun with this and, and kind of bucks the idea of being glossy and perfect. Now, I actually bring an example from Hollywood. Um, at the time, this is from 1956 from a film called Forbidden Planet, there was this um, uh, robot called Robbie the Robot um, that was kind of a one of the, f and this is before C-3PO or R2-D2 uh, by several decades. This is one of the first like robotic actors, I would say, in Hollywood that really hit it big and that, that featured in, in a lot of different films. And at the time, it was one of the most expensive film props ever in existence. 
Um, this whole Robbie the Robot is, is kind of a it has its own interesting history, and I go into some of it here. Um, but the idea is that um, is that this perfectness doesn't really encompass for for Paik what humanity is like. Um, it it's imperfect. And the beautiful mistake or the kind of wabi-sabi or, or elegant roughness or incompletion or texture and wear and tear of stuff is something that's super important. Um, and so I talk about, um, I talk about how artists can sometimes build counter arguments to perfection and intentionally explore mistakes as an anti-institutional kind of approach. In the case of um, Namjoon Paik and Robot K456, this was done as a kind of anti-art establishment uh, gesture that was sort of like a middle finger to the contemporary art scene of New York City and other scenes in the in the 60s. This is 1964 and 1965. Um, and that that's important and that's good. And that's how artists, I think artists can approach in trying to make perfect visions of the future. But from a DIY perspective, you're much better at exploring the messy um, messy approaches of something handmade. So that's that chapter in Art and DIY Electronics that came out today from MIT Press. Thanks.